Amen. Okay, as Romario has gone through um, the parable of the ten virgins, the touching into minor aspects of, of conversion and how we are at the end of the, at the end of the world, we are to represent Christ in um, in his fullest through our character, and we are to um, in this time period to to do a work of preparation in our hearts in rebuilding the temple. Amen, Amen. and thus. In troublous times, we are to go forward and do a work of rebuilding the temple. But in, but in a, a, a another understanding or in another meaning to the same phrase or the same, um, the same symbol, but using, a different, um, using different principles, the, the rebuilding of the temple is now the church. A work of, of gathering the stones, gathering the wood, the hay, the materials for the building so that God's, God's glory can be seen through his people. Amen? Because in the time of, of Moses, the Lord says that would not at all his, his, um, his servants be prophets. Amen? Amen? So at the end of the world, the Lord has to fulfill those very same words. Amen? Amen. So that we all can be prophets. We all, because the Lord wants us to all to be prophet, priest, and king, just like his son. Because Adam was prophet, priest, and king. So, so if it was like that in the beginning, and Adam's name means what? Man. man. So all man was to be prophet, priest, and king. But because of, of Adam now typifying Justinian, Constantine, and, and Clovis, and giving his power, his seat, and his great authority unto Satan, he gave that unto Satan. So Satan became the, the king of this world. Amen. And Christ came to redeem us and bring that back. Amen. So, but from the very beginning, the Lord gave us his word that we may be able to, to walk in step with him and receive that, that same glory. Amen. And be clothed in light as Adam and Eve were, clothed in light and clothed in the righteousness. Amen. So the very beginning, they were given a garment. Amen. Amen. They were clothed with light and righteousness from on high. But even though they had fallen, who gave them their second garment? Christ. So even from the beginning, God has given us what? A garment, a covering that the world may not see our shame. That Amen. See our nakedness. So in every reformatory movement, in every line, we are to see the very same thing. In Christ giving a... Um, a prophet unto the people in giving a deliverer, the Lord gives that nation a garment because light is now given in onto this nation. Amen. Amen. They clothe these nations. Amen. Because light had just entered into that nation and it covered them. So when the constitution was given unto the United States, the United States was covered with the light from heaven because it was the law of God that was given. And then after the law of God was given, a people, a church, a wife, Eve was then given unto this nation. And, and, um, and they were then clothed with the righteousness of Christ. Amen. That's the thing that Paul said that he knew that when, when he would die, wolves, wolves would, 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 would um, would come in. Church. Amen. So now, when that robe is lost, wolves, wolves come in and then rule, rule, um, rule, rule the, the, the nation. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So, so in the line of Moses, in the line of Christ, in the line of the decrees, in, in the line of the Millerites, even in our line, especially in our line, for we have to see what the Lord has done for us in times past. Even in our own, even in our own um, history, for the Lord is 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 no different in the time of 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 those in those times than He is today. So, what was the light that was given unto us from the beginning of our of our movement? Ramayu has spoke about this in in presentations past. Amen. The book of Daniel eleven, mm -hmm. especially forty to to twelve one. 
This is the light that was given us to clothe us in Christ's righteousness. Daniel 11 spoke about the things that are to come and pointed us back to the things that has been. So it has clothed us with the, the righteousness of Christ, the Alpha and the Omega. So beginning on the, in the top of the notes, in Daniel 11, verse 1, it says, Also I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and strengthen him. And now, oh, one, one point. So this was Gabriel speaking unto, unto Daniel. Amen? Amen? So he came to, he came unto Daniel to give him what? To give him light, yeah, to give him knowledge. Amen? To give him understanding. It says, verse 2, And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet what? Three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength through his riches, he shall stir all the realm of, of Grecia. Who do we apply these, um, this, this one who was, who was far richer? Trump. Amen, to Trump. Yeah. So the Lord gave us a natural application in our time that we are um, to strengthen us to go forward and strengthen his church. Amen? Because he gave us the application of the, he gave us the, the, the symbols that these things apply to that may strengthen us in this time that we are to go forth in his righteousness. Amen. Because the Lord says the entrance of thy, um, how's it go? The entrance of thy, amen. It gives us understanding. It gives us light and understanding. So from the entrance of, of Daniel 11, it gave us light and understanding upon the, the prophecies that were to take place in our time. Amen. And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And, and this king, we have made the application to, to Biden for, um, for, he has, he has come, he has stood up and become this, this mighty king that is doing all, um, um, doing all of his will. What was that? I was just saying, being a tyrant. Yes, yes, he's being, he's being a, a, a tyrant. He's, and, and from the beginning of his, um, of his reign, he's been doing a work of, of tearing down the, the fundamental things that, that the Lord has set in place for this nation. And, and is doing a work of stirring up the four winds and letting all the, um, the, 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 the passions of, of, of man to be riled up to, to ultimately go against God's people in this, in this time period. But let us, um, let us put in place the, the, the application that our forefathers had applied these things to, these natural applications first, because the Lord gives us a rule that first comes that which is natural, then comes that which is spiritual. And that one principle has great importance uh, unto us because it, it, it even points forward to our bodies even in the, in the second coming. For it's, it's, it's a very great principle. All the principles the Lord has given are, are vast and great things, but there are certain times that the Lord shines these principles out that may guide us in what we are to do and in the work that we are to do in that, in that very time. But let us continue. SDP 184, paragraph 2, says, The angel has said, When I go forth from Persia, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. And of Greece, he says, a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. It is in this language that Alexander is introduced in divine record. He was not a Greek, but a Macedonian, the son of Philip of Macedon. And um, he stands in history as one of those strong characters whom God uses in spite of the fact that they are unacquainted with him and know not his manner of working. Alexander, in, in Greek history, corresponds in some ways to Cyrus the Persian. So as Cyrus was used to do do the work of the Lord. Now, Alexander was brought forth in Bible history to do the work of the Lord. Amen. So we shall see the, the same applications with the, with the kings or the presidents that are, that are in, our, in our day. They, they are brought forth to do the work of the Lord, though they may not know um, God personally. For is the Lord who says that he sets up kings and he takes down kings. 
So he sets up these presidents and he takes down these presidents. Um, next paragraph. The third kingdom was represented by a leopard with four wings on its back. This symbol covered the time not only when Alexander was king, but during its divided state as well. The swiftness of conquest is well represented by the wings of a fowl. The cunning, the cunning, insinuating nature by the, by the leaf form of, of the leopard and the mingling together of truth and error in his doctrines and practices by the spots. Can the leopard change his spots? No more could Greece give truth without a portion of the, of the faults. No more can truth and error be separated in the system of education founded upon the wisdom of the Greeks, her philosophy, her myths, and her nature teaching. So it is lifting up this, 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 this um, mystery of, a, of iniquity, mixing truth and error, and placing man's, um, man's word above God's word. Amen? Daniel 8, verse, verses 5 to 8. And Daniel says, As I was considering, behold, a he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his, between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he moved with collar against him, and smote the ram, and brake his, his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground, and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable horns um, toward the four winds of heaven. So, um, what is, I don't have it, have it in here, but what is, uh, um, the horn in, in, in Bible prophecy? What, amen. It's a power. And the power of Grisha was this, was this king. It was this Alexander the Great. So this, this he goat that comes up, it is, typifying this nation where a king would rise up, but because of, 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 of his actions, he is broken and four are to come up and be cast to the, the four winds. Amen? So, as the Lord has shown us that, that this horn of Grisha was, was, was Biden, we should see in the near future that as he becomes greater and greater and does more in accordance with his own will, he is, to, he is likely to be what? He is likely to be broken. He is to be cast down. Can I have a reader for um, SDP 185, paragraph 2? Okay, and we see Biden doing the, the very same things. In, in quick succession, he's taking down all the, 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 um, the, the, the laws and, and the, the things that were implemented up, um, from the king that was before him. So we're not here to promote um, politics or anything like that, but we have to see with a spiritual eye what these, um, what these kings are doing in correspondence with God's word. Continue. Conquered. Conquered those who oppose him. He planned to unite the extensive territory over which the people ruled. He was the organizer and the trimmer, as well as the general. Okay. What was um, what was if y'all remember what was Biden preaching in the beginning of his campaign? Oh, we have 
a, yes, unity. He was trying to bring all together. He was talking about we need to unite as a nation. We are too divided. We need to bring the bring over the lefts and the and the right, the lefts and the and the right, and bring them all into this this um this one system. Amen. He, Amen. He was trying to bring them together. He was going as far as the Lord would lead him. Would allow him, I mean. Go ahead. Amen. Sorry, I'm looking ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Can I ever read it for D A R two twenty three? The facts stated stated. The facts stated in these verses clearly point to Alexander <coughs> and the division of his empire. The verses was the last Persian king whom they would meet him, and the prophecy therefore passes over the nine successors of Xerxes in the Persian Empire, and next introduces Alexander the Great. Having overthrown the Persian Empire, Alexander became absolute monarch of that empire to the fullest extent it was ever possessed by any such of the Persian kings. His dominion was great, including a greater portion of the then known habitable world, and he did according to his will. His will led him, BC 323, into a drunken debauch, as a result of which he died as a fool, the, as the fool died. And his vainglorious and ambition, ambitious son went into sudden, total, and everlasting eclipse. The kingdom was divided, but not for his posterity. It was plucked up for others beside gold. Within 15 years after his death, all his posterity had fallen victim to the jealous and um, jealousy and ambition of his leading generals. Not one of the race of Alexander was left to breathe upon the earth. So short is the transit from the highest pinnacle of glow, earthly glory to the lowest depths of oblivious death. The kingdom was rent into four divisions and taken possession of by Alexander's four ablest, or perhaps most ambitious and unprincipled generals. Okay, so from the from the fall of of Alexander, we see um, Alexander being his 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 kingdom being cast to the four winds, and four even worse than him because it says that they were a man. They were unprincipled generals, so they. They do all by their passions. They have no rule, no, no, no principles to govern them. So all of them were led by, by Satan, by this southern power. And, and we, also, we also see that though Greece was, um, was a nation of, of the, the West, it also has... It also operates off of principles and 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 um, yes, it operates off of prin some principles of the South, and moves as a as a nation that is in full opposition to to the law of God. For they lift up this this mystery of iniquity, and the mystery of iniquity is is of the South of Satan. So they they operate as a Southern power, given free reign to licentiousness and um and amen and passion and debauchery so we'll see of a of an we'll look into another king that was also of the south can i read for um actually genesis 20 verse 1 and 2 
It says, and, Ad- and Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur, and journeyed in Gerar. And Abraham said of, of Sarah his wife, she is, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. Judges 9 and verse 1 to 6. Now dealing with a, a different Abimelech, but Genesis 20 is showing that Abimelech has this, 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 southern, um, this southern link, link, linking Abimelech to this, um, this sinful char- characteristics. And it says, And Abimelech, the son of Jerubal, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with him, and with all the family of his house, of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you either to either that all the sons of Jerubal, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's brethren spake of him in, in the ears of all the men of Shechem all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, that they, that they said, he is our brother. So here in Judges 9, Abimelech is doing the same work of trying to unite and bring together these, um, the, um, bring together his, these brethren. And they gave him threescore and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Belbereth, wherewith um, Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. And he went unto his father's house at, at Aphra, and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubbabel, being threescore and ten persons upon one stone. Notwithstanding, yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbabel, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered, and all the house of, of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the, of the pillar that was in Shechem. Cavalry reader for 1T265, paragraph 1. Okay, so the Lord give, gave her an illustration of, of the north and the south, amen? Showing a representative of Christ and a representative of Satan. And show this battle of north and south from, from then. And then we'll, we'll see where she takes this scene and how she implements it in, in her day and age. 1T266, paragraph 1. It says, this scene was presented before me to illustrate the selfish love of slavery and the desperate measures which the South would adopt to cherish the institution and the dreadful lengths to which they would go before they would yield. So she takes the, um, the scene of, of, of Pharaoh, Egypt, and Moses and shows that this is this, this spirit of slavery because Egypt held Pharaoh... In, Pharaoh and Egypt kept Israel in bondage and had them work with rigor. This is slavery. And she takes this and brings it into the United States. So let's continue on. It says, The system of slavery has reduced and degraded human beings to the level of the brute, and the majority of slave masses regard them as such. The The consciences of these masters have become seared and hardened as was Pharaoh's, and if compelled to release their slaves, their principles remain unchanged. 
They would make the slave feel their oppressive power if possible. It looked to me like an impossibility, impossibility now for slavery to be done away. God alone could wrench the slave from the hand of his, of his desperate, relentless oppressor. All the abuse and cruelty exercised toward the slave is justly chargeable to the upholders of the slave system, whether they be southern or northern men. The north and the south were presented before me. The north had been deceived in regard to the south. They are better prepared for war than, than has been represented. Most of their men are well skilled in, in the use of arms, some of, some of them from experience in battle, others from habitual sporting. They have the advantage of the North in this respect, but have not, as a general thing, the valor and power of endurance that Northern men have. So she's, she's showing that the, the spirit that lives on in, in the United States, this North and South, which is a which is ultimately this, the, the spirit of, of um, this battle of north and south that goes on between Christ and Satan. But we know that ultimately this is, these, all these men have, have Satan's spirit, but these are, but the Lord uses them for his, for his glory, uses him for his, for his will. Yeah, the amen. Media and all of these things, mm -hmm. but the North has the endurance, you know, which is the Republicans and the Conservatives and all of those people. Amen. They're going to get help. Eventually, they see them. Amen, yes. Next quote, can I have a reader for 253, paragraph 1? I was shown some things in regard to our nation. My attention was called to the Southern Rebellion. The South had prepared themselves for a fierce conflict, while the North were asleep as their true feelings. Before President Lincoln's administration commenced, great advantage was taken by the South. The former administration planned and managed for the South to, be ro to rob the North of their implements of war. They had two objects for so doing. One, they co contemplating a, a determined rebellion and must prepare for it. Two, when, when they should re rebel, the North would be wholly unprepared. They would thus gain time, and by their violent threats and ruthless course, they, and they thought they could so intimidate the North that they would be obligated to yield to them. Obliged. Obliged, thank you. Obliged to yield to them and let them have everything in their own way. Wow. Okay, so. Wow. That's yeah. right now. Hey, amen, it is. They, they, they try to make the North bow down to them. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not going to have their way. Amen. They, they've been doing this from the, the very beginning. They have got, they've gotten... The money men, the media, all the um, all these organizations, amen, to to come on in their side. These are the arms, because like uh, Ramaya brought up in his his um, his presentation that they would smite them with their tongues. These are the their weapons. They use these these weapons of defaming character and killing men and bringing them down into the dust, that they can go forward and do this work of sitting this um sitting uh, upon the throne and bringing forth their, their, their rhetoric. And right in there, the, the bottom, one of their strongest weapons is intimidation. Amen. Also, in the South, it was strange. He said, thus they would gain the time. That's in addition to it. Ah, oh, yes. Amen. However, God is going to give them all time. Mm -hmm. That's Daniel in the book. Oh, that's right. He's going to give them time to counteract so the North is not going to lose. Eventually, the North is going to come back. Amen. And then it's amazing that he's going to give all his kingdom to the North. Amen. He to Daniel. He's going to give everything to Daniel. He put and place him in charge. Of the Amen. And the North has to come back as a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> yes, and we, we saw all these things play out in, um, we saw all these things play out last year. They used all the, all their means and, and use um, 
the, the strength they have over the people to, to, to tear down the, um, the, the north. Amen. All the money they're giving away, they're using it also to, to bring down the nation. Yes. Amen. Because it says that the north are the ones with the, with the money. Can we read it for um, 253 paragraph 2? Okay, pause right there. We have to see the, the, the implications of slavery in, in the things that they're doing. They're trying to force men to, to stay indoors when God's word says that we are to go outside and learn of him, of nature, embrace the sun. Even in this, in this time of, um, of, of, of disease, of pestilence, when nature is to be our, our healer, they're, they're trying to force men to, to stay in and continue to, to um, amen, and continue to, to circulate this, this um, disease. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. For debt, something like that. So there, there's in America one way to be a slave is by incarceration of of uh, the punishment oh. for for payment of of a debt or something like that. So this is what the South is doing. They're threatening everyone with imprisonment. They are using debt imprisonment, mm-hmm. yeah. and thus you become a slave once they put you in prison. Amen. And even with these um with these stay at home orders, is is basically house arrest. Mm-hmm. You can't leave your home without without um without certain documentation you you can't be freed unless they release you out of out of home amen yes amen go ahead they are annoyed and become perfectly exasperated if they cannot claim all the territory they desire they would tear down the boundaries and bring their slaves to any spot they please and curse the soil with slave labor the language of the south has been imperilous and the North have not taken suitable measures to silence it. Okay. This is interesting because this is what many people are saying, that the Democrats are enslaving. Uh, actually, a lot of black um, people on the conservative side said they, you, they're still doing slavery today. Mm-hmm. And they're looking at it in a spiritual aspect, almost like how we're looking Amen. at it. Their policies, the school system, and all, of, and all of these things in which they're doing. They become exasperated. See, as Biden says, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. Thin, yes. Yes, they're seeing the, the principles of, of this, this slavery system because because the Lord says that the South will not change. It will it like a like like Satan, it continually changes its form and 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 brings its, its deception deeper and, and deeper up into the, the minds of the people. Two fifty four paragraph one says, the rebellion was handled so carefully, so slowly, that many who at first um, started with horror at the thought of, of rebellion were influenced by, by rebels to look upon it as right and just. We're even seeing people, um, people in the government today changing their, their ideologies to what, to what they, they first thought was right to now going with the, with the same rhetoric of the South. They're falling a line in this deep laid plot. Uh, right and just, and it's always it's always dark and quiet at first, but then but then it bursts forth. Amen. Strongly. Amen. Yes, because 
Because Satan is only taking this, this principle from what Christ does. She says the, the, the seed lies dormant in a cold, lifeless heart. But, but um, in, the, in the crisis, when it's the, like, you, like you said, it's the darkest hour, it shines forth. Now it comes up. Now the heart, amen, now the heart now, now clings onto, onto Christ. So Satan takes that and perverts it to his, to his own means. This is that, that plot that's underlined, that's below the surface. And thousands joined the Southern Confederacy who, who would not have prompt and thorough measures been carried out by our government at an early period of the rebellion, even as ill-prepared as it, as it then was for war. Okay, so let's let's go into these these merchantmen because these merchantmen are the ones who are who are funding these um funding the funding Grisha or or the the South. But before we get into that, let's go back up to to Judges nine and. Let's read verses, verses 2 and verses 4. And it says, Speak, I pray you, and this is um, earlier in the notes, in Judges 9. Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem. So, so this, is, um, this is Abimelech speaking unto these men of Shechem. Whether, wh whether is better for you, either of the sons of Jeru um, Jerubal, which are three score and ten persons reign over you, or that, that one reign over you, which is speaking of himself. Now let's jump down to verse 4. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver. So these men of Shechem now became these, these moneyed men, these merchant men that now gave their, their means and their funds to lift up um, Abimelech's reign. Amen. And it says, out of the house of Baal Bereth. Now, now let's go back down under the title of merchantmen. And let's bring another uh, application to who these, these merchantmen are. Judges 10 and verses 2. And it says, the sons of, of Japheth, Gomer, Amen. The sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog, and Madai and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and, and Tyrus. Um, 1 Chronicles 1, verse 7. And the sons of, of Javan is Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. And it says in STI, um, paragraph 3, it says, the market of Tyre was supplied with bright and polished iron by the merchants of the merchants of by Dan and Javan. So Tyre is is funded by by Dan and Javan. And we see Javan is the father of Tarshish. And we know the the uh, Tarshish is these um, is the, the 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 finances, the the riches. Can I have a reader for um, Ezekiel 28, verse 16, 18, and 19? By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O cover and cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuary by, by the multitude of thine iniquity. By the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All, they, all that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Okay, so this is Ezekiel giving us condemnation towards Tyre. And... And um, 
and these, and these merchantmen, these, these rich men of the world. And this is this condemnation that is coming upon them for funding this, this, um, this rebellion or this trying to take down of, of the north and tear down his constitution. Amen. The traffic for that to bring us to the true time of changes. Amen. And um, it also brings in Laodicea, which is the rich man. Mm-hmm. They're the ones, but Laodicea is those in the church that are lukewarm. They're the ones that defile in the temple. God says, any man defile the temple, him shall God destroy. They're not building the temple. Amen. Instead, they're building on their own land. Amen. That's, uh, that, and now, now that you mentioned that, it's... Um, because they're, they're doing this work of defiling the temple, the Lord is, is, is even showing the, um, the United States, the, it's even showing the United States the, the cleansing of the temple. For we have on the east, we have floods and, and hurricanes that are, that are sweeping away these, um, these cities through water, through these floods. Amen. But on the, well, on the West, what do we have? Fire. We have unquenchable fires. We have fires that are burning these, these, um, these cities. So it's showing these, these, um, how the Lord will, will cleanse by water and by fire, by floods and by this un, unquenchable fire. Amen. With the fire, yes. Is showing this that, that, that we should be understanding these temple cleansings. We should be doing a work of cleansing our, our soul temples. But but they're going forth and defiling the temples, trying to bring up trying to bring out these 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 poisons from these noxious plants that Satan has planted in the earth and trying to place them within the the bodies. Um I'm going to read 4 B.C., 1163, paragraph 7. Um, this one is, is not in your notes. It says, Thou was perfect in thy ways till iniquity was found in thee. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. All this was the gift of God. God was not chargeable with this, making the, the covering, cherub, covering cherub beautiful, noble, and good. By the multitude of... Of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and and thou hast sinned. And that's that's what that's what we're ha- what we're seeing. We're seeing the violence that has taken place in this nation, and it is the, it's the the cause of this um this these licentious practices that are taking place within the nation. It says thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. In this place, traffic is the emblem of, cor- of corrupt administration. It denotes the bringing of self-seeking into spiritual office. Nothing in spiritual service is acceptable to God except the purposes and works that are for the good of the universe. To do good to others will redound to the glory of God. Amen. They're seeking this position. They're the South, but want to have both the North and the South. They're, they're, they're Satan trying to sit upon the throne and, and rule. But let us continue. Judges 9, verse 23 to 26. It says, Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. This is now where the, the horn is, is, is soon to be broken. It says, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the cruelty done to the three score and ten sons of Jerubbabel might come, and their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. And the men of Shechem set liars in wait for him in the top of the mountains, and they robbed all that came along that way by them. And it was told Abimelech, And Gael, the son of Ebed, came with his brethren and went over to Shechem. And the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. It 
Okay. Isaiah 23 and verse, verse 8 says, Who has taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning city, whose merchants are princes, whose traffickers are the honorable of the earth? For he saith, Are not my, my princes altogether kings? So, so these moneyed men are these, these princes are in the earth. They're these, these high people of high regard and high stature. As as Kanar says, there are these giants that are that are in the land. Verses nine to eleven says, "The Lord of hosts hath purposed it to slay, to stain the pride of of all glory, and to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. Pass through thy land as a river, O daughter of Tar Tarshish. There is no more strength. He stretched out his hand over the sea." He shook the kingdoms. The Lord hath given a commandment against the merchant city to destroy the strongholds thereof. Howl ye ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. And it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten seventy years, seventy years, according to the days of one king. After the end of seventy years shall Tyre sing as a harlot. Take a harp, go out, go about the city, thou harlot that has that has been forgotten. Make sweet melody, sing many songs, that thou mayest be remembered. And it shall come to pass, after the end of seventy years, that the Lord will visit Tyre, and she shall turn to her hire, and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. And her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord. It shall not be treasured nor laid up for, the, for her merchandise, shall be for them that, that dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiently and, and for durable clothing. Coming soon to a, to a close. So we know one application of, of Tyre, we know, is, is the papacy. And she's behind the scenes doing this work of, of, um, doing this work of trying to bring down the nation. But as she is doing, she's influencing um, the, the, amen, the kings of the earth to do the same unto the people. And, and the Lord will, would, will bring this, this condemnation upon um, her head and upon the heads of, of those who are, who are following suit. Because we see as we read down in, um, in Judges 9 that a, a stone is then cast down upon the head of, of Abimelech, crushing his, his head. But let's continue into, um, to see who, who would cast this, cast this, um, this stone upon, upon, her, upon his head. Can I read it for um, um, Ezekiel 27, 25 to 30? Okay, so, so it says in verse 26, it says, Thy rowers have brought thee into great waters. It says, The east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the sea. Now remember, the, the power of Grisha is this notable horn. And this notable horn has been, um, has been funded by these merchantmen. And, a, huh? Yeah, the, yeah, we have to understand the work of the, the rowers and the, the symbol of the rowers of, of, 
of who they apply to. For, for in um, Judges 9, we see the, the men of Shechem as these merchantmen that come down to break down the, um, this notable horn and go against, um, and go against um, uh, uh, Abimelech. But let's look at what the, the meaning of these, of these rowers what these rowers are, because it has this, this other application. It says, it's rowers, it says, it says to push forth, to lash, to go, to go about, to go through, to go to and fro. It says to run to and fro. So these rowers, they run to and fro. So let's see what, um, so what goes, what's the first thing that has, has gone to and fro in in the Bible. And it says in Genesis 8, it says, And he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro, until the waters were dried up from off the earth. And, and in Isaiah 46, it says, Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. So this raven this ravenous bird is the one who goes to and fro to 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 um to bring these to bring Tarshish into these um into these great waters to bring down Tarshish and um and um and Abimelech down into into the dust. And I haven't finished looking into these what these these great waters mean, but one application is is of the waters is these is these people is these these tongues but what was that amen this is these, these yes amen yes Yes, and this and and this ravenous bird is, is gonna bring down this um bring down Tarshish in these um these great waters. But these are some things that we are to to see um to see that are coming up to coming up in prominence before this um this experience comes to pass and now with the dawn at the dawn where now these this horn is now is brought down. Yes, amen. Yeah. You begin this basically this destruction begins in the east, the raven goes in the east. To the west, yes. And Amen. And Islam is 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 a symbol of the east. It's the power of the east that troubles these these nations. And what we saw in, in 9 eleven, um, Islam went against their, their financial system by going against the World Trade Center. Which is their, which is a symbol of the ships of Tarshish. Amen. Their business in in great waters. So we're to see a, 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 a amen. A fall into fall of business into these great waters. So, if there are no other other comments, I leave these thoughts with you, and and shall we close with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father. There are much things that are unclear unto us at this time. But as we continue to walk in the light, Lord, we pray and ask that, that you may shine great light upon your holy word that may guide us, Lord, into, into all truth, that we may understand who these, who these symbols are pointing to and how we are to fit and ready ourselves, Lord, for the, the troublous times that are before us. Please guide us, Lord, into, into this week. And I pray even, even now that in this week, as you pour out your spirit upon us, as you have counseled us that you would do, that these, that these um, symbols and principles may shine forth before us. Guide us, dear Lord, in, in these things, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.